Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Want to pray? Uh, Want to give thanks to the praise team for a wonderful selection. We're going to praise them for the rest of our day. In spite of what's going on, I'm like Daniel said, even if you don't do it, I'm going to praise you. Y'all ready for the word? Okay, we're going we're gonna to bring our pastor on to introduce the speaker. And after the pastor, you will have our own Deacon Murphy. You should be excited like I am. Amen. Come on, clap your hands, shout hallelujah. Come on, clap your hands, shout hallelujah another time. Hallelujah. Oh, you thanks unto the Lord for you is good and his mercy. Endure it forever. Come on, put your hands together and give God another praise and have to God today. Amen. We're going to praise Him for the rest of our days. Hallelujah. I said, Hallelujah. Thank God for His grace and wisdom to the house of God today. We just got to praise your praise team. Amen. amen. Praise God. Amen. We are, we are pushing. Amen. And moving by the grace of God. So glad to see you out today. Amen. And on today, amen, we have a treat for us. Amen? Amen. 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 We, going, we have our own Deacon Murray, praise God. That, amen. Even though he still holds the title of Deacon, but he is, amen, a preacher. Amen. amen. And we know that God's going to do the rest later on. Amen? Amen. amen. We know that God is great and is greatly to be, to be praised. I do not want to belay the time. Amen. But uh, the word of God, amen, is of the utmost importance. Amen. Amen. The Bible says man cannot live by bread alone, uh -uh. but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. And on today, amen, we're going to amen, sit attentively and hear what thus saith the Lord. Amen? amen? So everybody point your hand this way and say, God bless. 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 Deacon Murray. Come on, put your hands together. Give God praise for him. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Praise him, praise him, praise him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I know we just sang a whole lot, but I'm, but I'm going to need y'all to go with me just a little while. If I can get you to stand on your feet very quickly. Amen. And just sing a couple of bars of this song with me. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Let's say that he's a savior. Savior, savior, savior. Savior, savior, savior. Savior, savior, savior. Jesus. Thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. That's just on my spirit. It's about amen. Jesus this morning. Amen. amen. Glory to God. Are you feeling good this morning? Amen. amen. I'd like to give honor and praise to my Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Giving honor due to our shepherd. Amen. Uh, amen. Uh, Pastor Terrence Brown amen. this morning. Amen. I have it. Okay. Thank you, sir. Hallelujah. And Lady Brown this morning. Amen. amen. And, and amen. we're also celebrating Lady Brown's birthday. Amen. amen. Which is coming up tomorrow. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I would be remiss if I did not mention my beautiful wife back there. Amen. Yes, yes. 27 years. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. So I appreciate everyone being out here on today. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This morning, I... Everybody said that I'm going to try not to be before you long. Amen. But this morning, I have a question for you. The question is, where is your heart? Amen. 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 Where is your heart? I know I just asked you to sit down. Don't worry about it. But the focus verse this morning is going to come from Matthew 6 and 21. And it reads on this wise, where is where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen. Amen. I'm going to read that one more time for your hearing. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen? Hallelujah. We look at this text this morning. I'm going to just go back just a little bit and give you just a little bit of a backstory here. Jesus, in the, in the fourth chapter of Matthew, uh, is starting his public ministry, if you will. 
Amen. And he's in a city in a place called Capernaum. Amen. And there's just some things that Jesus was teaching. He's about, he's on the Sermon of the Mount. Amen. Amen. And on the Sermon of the Mount, he's preaching and he's teaching to the people this morning, this, this morning, this afternoon, whatever the time was of day that he was. Amen. But he was telling us to do some things. Amen. Jesus went along in the Sermon of the Mount and he told people to not to rebel against one another. He says that retaliation is forbidden. And you're saying, I know you're saying to yourself, what does that even mean? The Bible says that he says in 5 and 39 to turn the other cheek. But the reason why I want to talk about that, the scripture text here says that ye have heard that if you have been said an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. You see, that is the Old Testament, amen? Jesus came to correct that, if you will, so to speak, and give a new commandment, and he gave us new instructions, and then the scripture says, but I say unto you that you shall do what? Resist not the devil, but whosoever shall smite thee on the right cheek. Let's stop right there for a second. Everybody thinks when you hear the words, turn the other cheek, it means that you just turn away from the person that's harmed you. But listen, you got to remember and read the rest of the text. The rest of the text says to do what? The truth is, the rest of the text tells you to give the person that's trying to harm you the other cheek. It's not saying walk away from them. It's saying give them the other cheek. It's about the retaliation. The Bible says that revenge belongs to the Lord. Amen? Amen. It belongs to him. We go on, we go a little bit further, and then Jesus tells the people yet again something else that I know you can't fathom sometimes. In 5 and 44, he tells them to do what? To love your enemies. Amen? How hard is it for you to love somebody that's been doing you wrong, that has done you dirty for years and years and years, if you will, that have treated you wrong, that have use you in a certain sense. The, the scripture here says, but I say unto you that you love your enemies. Yeah. Bless them that curse you. Uh -huh. Do good to them. Wait a minute. They're cursing me. They're harming me. But you want me to do good? Yes. Not because Deacon Murray said it. Because Jesus said it. If you have your Bible, it's in red in your Bible. Jesus said, bless them that curse you. Yes. Do good to them that hate you. Yes. And do what? Pray. For them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Amen. Glory to God. Jesus is still on the Sermon on the Mount. And then you get the Lord's Prayer. Amen. Amen. In the Lord's Prayer, most of us today can recite the Lord's Prayer mainly because during the time of a funeral, a homegoing service. Yeah. Amen. But let me explain something to you here about the Lord's Prayer. The, in the Lord's Prayer, in the 11th verse, it says, give us what? This, this day. day. Amen? Our daily bread. Yes. If, if I'm praying to the Lord to give me this day my daily bread, I'm not dead. Amen? Amen. I'm still living. So I just wanted us to look at these certain scriptures here as I lead up to the, to, to the text where I'm trying to go today. Amen? So all of these things Jesus is teaching along the way. He's preaching the word. And now we get to the text that I want to talk about. The treasures in heaven. Amen? Where is your heart? We're going to talk about where your heart is today. Amen. The Bible says here in, in, in verse 6 and 19, hallelujah, I'm going to put it up on the screen for, for your viewing. Amen. The Bible says, lay not up yourselves treasures upon the earth. Amen. Treasures upon the earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. Well, what does that mean, you say? It means stop putting your treasures in these natural things. Amen. Stop putting your treasures in your house. Stop putting your treasures in your job. Stop putting treasures in people. Glory to God. Because the Bible says here, Jesus says that those things will rust out. Yeah. The only things that will last anyway is what you do for the Lord. Uh -huh. But you see what Jesus did here? There's always a consequence. Jesus gives us good, but he also gives us a little bit of downside too. See, everybody wants to preach prosperity, but we have to understand the consequences of not doing what Jesus says. And the next verse, it says, but we don't like the but. We don't like the but. The but lay up yourselves treasures in heaven. Do it to the things in heaven where neither, neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. So guess what? In heaven, your stuff can't be stolen. Amen. Oh, I don't care what you accumulate on earth. 
when you get to heaven, the treasures that's been laid up for you in heaven, they can't be stolen from you. They can't be taken from you because they've been given to you by God. Let's continue on in the text where I come to. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen. Where is your heart today? I ask you. Is your heart tied up in Mr. X or Mrs. X? Come on now. Y'all better leave them people alone. Y'all better stay away from them for those married folk. If that ain't your wife, stay away from her. If that ain't your husband, stay away from him. I don't care what nobody says. I don't care how much money they give you. I don't care how much love they give you, whatever it is. Y'all better leave that stuff alone. Because where your heart is, look, look what the word says here. That's your treasure. That's where your heart is going to be. And I'm going to go on a little further because I need us to understand this. I'm going to skip down very quickly to verse 24. Glory to God. And verse 24 says what? No man can serve two masters. For either he hates one and love the other. You see how that works? You can't love money and God at the same time. And we're going to get to it. Look what it says here. Or else he will hold the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. And for those of you that didn't know, mammon is money. What does that mean? If you're chasing money, if that's all it is in your mind, and you're just chasing money because you want a bigger house, you want a bigger car, you want a bigger ex, you want more of this. And what happens is this. God, the Bible says God gave each of us a measure of faith. Amen. Amen. When you start to chase after the things of the world, this is what happens. Your faith starts to go this way. Uh -oh. It goes down. It goes down. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, because now all of a sudden you thought that everything that you've accumulated over time, you did. Right. You start to forget that your wealth and everything that you have came directly from the Lord. Amen. The Bible says that you can't serve them both. In 1 Timothy, glory to God, look what the words are. I have to break it down. <laughs> People say very easily, money is the root of all evil, right? Right? Money is the root of all evil? That, that's what they say, but they're wrong. Because the scripture says, for the love of money is the root of all evil. You see, when the love, when you start to love something, do you know why your heart is so important? You ever, mm, Jesus, you ever been with somebody that you know you shouldn't have been with? You done fell in love? You know why it's hard to get away from that person? Because it's cemented here in your heart. And that's what, that's, what, that's what the love of money is referring to. You start to love that thing more than anything else. Because all you're doing is chasing the dollar because you want more. You know why? Because maybe when you were younger, you didn't have as much. You didn't have anything. And we as parents say, we always want to give our children something more than what we had growing up. The problem is we start to chase and keep that thing more than we care about the word of God. Amen. The reason why I want to break this scripture down is because if you talk about it, you ever, had, you ever talk to somebody about the scripture, D? It stops right here. Nobody talks about the rest of the scripture. What does the rest of the scripture say? While with some coveted. Coveted. Yes, sir. That's all you care about. That's your lust. That's your desire. That's all you want. All you want is money. You think, excuse me, you think, I'm going to say it to myself, we think that money answereth all things. Wait a minute. That's in the Bible, though, right? That is, that, that, that is in the Bible. I'm going to get to that, Pastor Brown. Hang on one second. That's what we think. That's the justification that we use when we talk about money. Well, no, no, no. Money answers all things. Hang on. Let's stick with this scripture first. Let's talk about this. Let's continue in the same scripture. Watch this. They have. Who's they? Them. What you say, Pastor? Them, they, those. They, them. They, they have erred from the faith. When you start to desire these things of this world, you slowly but surely step away from God. The longer you start striving after those things, you move away from God. Amen. Amen. Praise him. And guess what? We can change this word. I know the Bible says that we don't add or take away, but hang on. For the love of alcohol for the love of women, for the love of men, for the love of cars, for the love of houses, anything that's a love of something that you put before God, you start moving away from God. That's why the word earth says you fell away, you've fallen away from the faith. Yeah. That scripture is not done. Hang on. Uh -oh. Then it says, and pierced themselves 
through many sorrows. Wait a minute. So you're saying I'm, it, it, it's self-inflicting. Yeah, yes, you're doing it. Yes. See, stop blaming the devil for the things that you're doing. Right. You did it. Right. You fell in love with that thing. Yes. You know it wasn't right. I can say I'm talking to the sinners, but wait, I'm talking to the, to the yes. saints too. Yes. Yes. Come on, David. Yes. Come on, David. Yes. 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 To the church now, right? Amen. Everybody here in church, right? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Glory yeah. to God. So we got to remember that. And I know you said, oh, what about that money answer if all things? Hang on, hang on. Uh, 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 money answer if all things. Let me explain that, 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 that scripture, amen, about the money answer if all things. When you go to that scripture, that scripture is referring to the things on the earth. Mm -hmm. Guess what? Money does answer all things. You want a house? Money will get you a house. Amen. You want a car? Money will get you a car. You want more stuff? Money will get you all of that. But guess what? Money can't get you into heaven. Amen. Money ain't going to get you no joy. Amen. Money ain't going to get you no peace. Amen. Money ain't going to give you some long suffering. Amen. Money ain't going to give you the fruits of the spirit that you can only get from Jesus himself. Amen. Money can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. So when you start searching for those things and you start looking only on that thing, I'm not telling you don't strive to be better. I'm not telling you don't Try to get a promotion, but what I'm saying is when you allow that thing to overtake everything else, and that's all you're working toward, you seem to forget mm. about God. Amen. Amen. Right, right, that's good. Because yeah. guess what? When you first got the job, you was, oh, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, I got this job. I, that, that on paper, they said I couldn't get. Amen. Now you ain't satisfied no more with what Jesus gave you. Right. Oh, Lord. You are no longer content. Now you want more. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with wanting more, but understand that God wants you to want him more than the money. Amen. Amen. Don't worry about it. If you know the scripture, stay right there in the book of Matthew 6 and 33. It then goes on to give you more instruction to say, do what? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and what? And his righteousness. If you don't know what righteousness is, let me explain it to you. Righteousness is Lining up with the word of God. That's righteousness. So how do you attain that? Stay in your word. Stay on your knees. Pray. Get in your closet. Go to that praise place Pastor challenged us with. Amen? Do those things. This is what the word of God is trying to tell us. The fruits of the spirit. You can't get those things with money. You ever tried to buy some gentleness? Guess what? It don't work. <laughs> You ever tried to be patient with somebody and say, you know what? I don't know how to be patient with that person. I'm going to give you $100. Teach me how to be patient. Guess what? It ain't going to work. You can't buy these things with money. Amen? Amen. We got to stop putting God in a box, if you will. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. What do you need God to be today? Amen? What do you need God to be for you today? Because he is that thing. Stop thinking that God only works over here. Stop thinking that God only works in the church. Stop thinking that, watch this. Stop thinking that God only works in saved people. Stop believing that God can only do what you were taught he could do. Traditions will get us messed up, folks. Yes, Read the Bible for yourself. The Bible says to study, right? Yes. Study the word. Amen. So that you can rightly divide the word. Yes. So that when the man and woman of God is standing before you telling you the word, guess what? You'll get them itching ears. Amen. You'll start to hear and understand. Whoa, 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 wait. That's not vital what he's talking about. Let me go back and find out what the word says. I have an issue. It's in the Bible. That's good, David. You gotta search for the scriptures, amen. Yeah. You gotta find it. What answer you have? What do you need from God? Yeah, yeah, what do you need yeah. God to be for you today? It's in the Bible. It's in the book. Yeah. It's in the book. Thank you, sir. It's in the book. Jehovah Rapha. Glory yeah. to God. You need healing in your body? Yeah. Call on the name of Jesus. Yeah. Glory to God. Jehovah Jireh. You need to be provided with something? Yeah. Come on. Ask God. Yeah. It's there. Glory yeah. to God. Yeah. Wait a minute. Some of y'all are just so confused in your mind. You don't understand what's going on. Then you need Jehovah Shalom. You yeah. need some peace yeah. in your life. Hallelujah. Yeah. This is what God has for us. We should be working so much about the care in this world that you're forgetting that everything, God is still in control. Yeah. Yeah. Stop putting God in the box. Where is your heart today? Yeah. Watch this. I, 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 I really wanted to do a demonstration. I, all right, let's, let's just go with it. Here's the Bible. Here's a bucket of water. Here's a spray bottle. 
that sprays out a little mist. You need something from God today, and I tell you that the Holy Ghost is right here. Here go the, here go the spray bottle, and here go the, the big old bucket of water. What Holy Ghost you want? I want the bucket. Bro. You want the bucket? Yeah. You want the bucket? Everybody want the bucket? Yeah. Watch this. It wasn't a trick question. I'm just want to show you something real quick. <laughs> if I sprinkle some God on you, is God still not God? Yes. Yeah. Does God change? No. Does his power change? No. So whether you get a bucket today or a sprinkle tomorrow, God is still God. Amen. God doesn't cease to exist to be who he is. Amen. You know why? Because that same measure of faith that God gave each and every one of us, it works differently for us. Today, I'm high on the Lord. Everything is great in my life, but I still need God. So you know what? Come on over here, Jesus, and give me a little spritz. Woo! Jesus. Yeah. So wait a minute. Damn, I just lost a family member. There's something going on. I just lost my job and my faith gets so low. I'm down here. But today I need the whole foreign of God on my life. I need it all. So you got to understand that God is still who he says that he is. He said in the scripture, don't tell them that I am that I am. He doesn't stop being who he is. What you need from God today? Where's your heart? Where's it at? Yeah. If your heart is in the drum, guess what? That's your treasure. Amen. Right there. Good luck with that. Good luck getting the drum set into uh, heaven. Yeah. Come on. Amen. It ain't going to work. Amen. It ain't going to work. Yeah. That's good, Deacon. I'm just trying to help us today. I know ain't nobody shouting. It's all right. Oh, it's good. But we got to understand, hallelujah, yeah. that yeah. God is who he says he is. Yeah. Yeah. But guess yeah. what? The scripture also says that for who? Whoever says I'll do what? Believe. Mm -hmm. So do you believe? Because yeah. if you believe, then you have to understand that maybe this year I need the whole pouring. Yeah. And next year I need the little sprinkle. It depends on where I'm at. Yeah. We don't walk the same walk. Yeah. We have a shepherd that sits in that seat. I sat there for a little while today. He felt good too. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell nobody. Oh wait, we, we live. We have a shepherd of this house. Amen. And he has peaks and valleys too. Amen. 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 You know why? Because he's human. Yes. Amen. Because he's spirit. He's tripart nature. He's flesh. He's spirit. He has a soul. Glory to God. And so every now and again, we got to pray for him. Yes. 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 As a matter of fact, more than now and then, yes. we got to pray for him. Yes. You know why? Because when ain't nobody praying for us, he's praying for you. Yes. Right. The minute this man met you, he started praying for you. I guarantee you that. I came to this church. I'm going to tell this a little story. I came to this church in 2011 at the old building, and I didn't stay. I don't know. I'm doing what God tells me to do. And in that time period, I was gone for about four or five years, but Pastor Brown stayed in touch with me. He would text me every so often just to see how I was doing. Why? I guess because the Lord knew I was going to be here today on 9 20 20, 20. <laughs> Amen. Standing before the people today under his tutelage. The Bible says to attain the wise counsel, that's what I'm doing. Amen. Where's your heart today, brothers and sisters? Where's your heart today? God never stops being who he is. You know, all I can think about today is how awesome that he is. And every time I need God, he is exactly what I need him to be. Amen. When I couldn't pay my rent, 20 years ago, he was my provider. Yes, sir. When my daughter was sick and I needed a healer in my life and my family, he was my healer. Glory Amen. to God. Yes, sir. When I needed more of him, he poured his Holy Ghost out on me. Amen. Every time I needed him, he just continued to be there for me Amen. in every service, in every way that I needed him to be. Glory to God. I'm, 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 I'm 31 years in with my wife, 27 years married, and if God wasn't in it, we wouldn't be together. I'm going to tell you that right now. Amen. There's certain things, there's everything, but we have to understand what God does and how he moves in our lives. Amen. If I ask each and every one of you to give me a testimony right now what God has done for you, I'm sure every single one of you can tell me something. Amen. And if it wasn't nothing big, what you think is big, the fact that he woke you up, the fact that you didn't stub your toe on the bed this morning is a blessing, amen? amen. Because had you stubbed your toe on the on the bed, guess what? That might have been your excuse not to come to church. Amen. You see, we don't think about things like that. Where's your heart? Where is your heart? Where is your heart? Mm -hmm. I know in this pandemic time, people are staying home more and more and more, but where's your heart? 
just because you're not physically in the building, don't mean you can't have church. Amen. God is in us. Amen. 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 We gotta continue. We have to press that way. Amen. And guess what? Now you're being exposed a little bit more because now you're not in church. You're not around the saints. So now you're being more exposed to the other people, to the people that are not in church. And guess what? Slowly but surely, you'll start doing this. Amen. You'll start doing this. You'll start doing this. The church door is open. It's taking a long time for you to get back. Why? Because you're still in motion doing this. Because you're still in motion. Where's your heart? Amen. Where's your heart, brothers and sisters? Then Peter said unto them, to do what? To repent. Yes, sir. Why? Why? For the remission of your sins. Yeah. Be baptized. You got to tell God you're sorry. Yes. But it's yes. not just telling God I'm sorry. It's literally turning around mm -hmm. and going away from that thing which you just told God you were sorry from. Mm -hmm. And not going back. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's easy. Let me see. Does the word easy in, in that? Mm -hmm. No, nah, the word easy is not in there. But it's, a, it's doable. It's attainable. Amen? Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Why? Look what the word says here. If you repent... If you be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ. Everyone. Yeah. Everyone. Yeah. Look what the word says. And ye shall, shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It didn't say might. Shall. It didn't say maybe. The word says shall. Mm -hmm. But you got to believe. You got to believe everything in your being, everything in your heart. Everybody don't understand all the time. There is enough Bible for the sinner to get saved. Amen. There's enough word out there, so you don't have to sit there and say, well, well, I don't understand. There's enough. God's made the word extremely plain for you. He's put a preacher before you to preach the word. He's put a teacher before you to teach the word. But these are the things that we have to do. Glory to God. And if you are already saved this morning, you got to read more and more of Paul's writings because Paul wrote to the church. Mm. Paul taught us. He taught the saints as he was doing on all his journeys on how to stay holy, how to live holy. Holiness still exists today, brothers and sisters. Amen. Holiness is still essential. Look at this. After the Lord's Prayer, look what Jesus said. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive your trespasses. Yeah. But if you don't, see, there's that but again. See, people don't like the but, I told you. But if you don't, forgive their trespasses, neither will your father forgive yours. So wait, you telling me I gotta also forgive them? Yes, you gotta also forgive them. Last time I checked, Pastor Brown, you correct me if I'm wrong, evangelist, correct me if I'm wrong, no place in the Bible says I can make it into heaven with unforgiveness on my heart because unforgiveness is a sin against Jesus, amen? amen. Well, guess what? If you haven't forgiven them yet, come let on now. Let them go, let them go. You gotta let that thing go. You got to let that thing, let them, let it, let whatever it is, let that thing go. Glory to God. I pray something was said this morning that helped you today. Glory to God. I'm actually standing on your feet. Hallelujah. We have pastor here. I'm here. Evangelist is here. We have deacons here in the building. Glory to God. If this is you today, if the Lord is... Touching your heart is tugging on you right now. You 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 want to move, but your your feet feel like it's in quicksand. You feel like you're stuck. Come down the aisle this morning. We have water. We have water for baptism today. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. Amen. You don't have to wait. You don't have to leave this church the same way that you came in today. Glory to God. I want you to walk out differently. We want you to walk out differently. Yeah. We want you to walk out with a smile on your face, knowing that not the preacher did something for me, but that God did something yeah. for you. Yeah. The Holy Ghost came upon you today and set some things right for you. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. I thank you yet again for the opportunity to stand before God's people. If there not be one, I'm going to turn it over to our pastor right now. Amen? Amen. Amen.
little bit closer with him. Yeah. Amen. 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 And I commend the ones who are champions in God. Amen. I commend you. And I commend those who are infants in God. Amen. I commend you. First and foremost, that you have a mind to want to be with God. Amen. 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 And the reason why I commend the champions is because you did not get there without a fight. Amen. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Amen. 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 I fought for my place in God. Amen. Amen. But I commend the, the infancies because they are striving to get to where you are. Amen. And wherever we are in God, we have to celebrate. Yes. Amen. Though we may be at, like an apostle Paul, praise the Lord, or we may be like the woman with an issue of blood. Know that we have God in our reach. Amen? Amen. Amen. And for that, we pray. Father, we thank you for your grace and mercy. Yes, we thank you for your goodness on today, Lord. We ask, Father, that you, God, touch us at the point of our needs, oh God. We ask, Lord, Father, that you do open the eyes of our heart, heart this morning. Lord, we can see where our heart's at. Father, we ask, dear Lord, you bless everyone on the sound of our voices. Strengthen them where we're weak. Encourage where we're down trying. And for that, we say thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Come on, clap your hands and shout hallelujah. Come on, you do better than that. Clap your hands and shout hallelujah.